everyone, hi. Right, so before we get started, I just want to say I'm Andrea, yeah? Really good to see you here today. I'm actually really looking forward to talking to you. I've been looking forward to this for ages. I'm here today to tell you about Unglue You and how we can help you. So, before we go any further, I just want to check. Is everybody here because you want to know how to unlock your potential to live the life you desire? Yeah? Great. We're all in the right place because I'm here to share with you how that works. And the easiest way for me to do that is to start by sharing my story. Okay. Okay, so has anybody here ever felt stuck? Yeah. Has anybody here never felt stuck? Yeah, I thought that would be the case. Well, that was me five years ago. I felt stuck in a job where I felt unfulfilled, unhappy. So how did I go from there to standing here in front of you talking? Well, I've always had an interest in art and creativity. And I studied it at school and then on into higher education. But when I became pregnant, I left to have my daughter. And I don't know if anybody else has experienced something like that. A major life change that has left you feeling unsure of yourself, uncertain of your future. Maybe it's divorce, it could be redundancy, a career change. It might be something you actually knows coming, like kids going off to school for the first time or off to university. Does that resonate with anyone? Has anybody had those major life shifts, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so for me, when I had my daughter, that was great, because actually, she's a real blessing, and she's actually been really helping me out this weekend. But when I first had her, I worked in retail. Then I worked in the voluntary sector. But all the time, I really wanted to use art and creativity to help others. So in 2006, I did an Art Therapy Foundation course, and it was there that I learned about the power of images to tap your unconscious. It was there that I learned that it didn't actually matter what it looked like, it was about the process. But it was also there that I learned that I didn't want to be an art therapist. And so I went back to work in the voluntary sector. And again, it's that familiar where you know you want to change, you want to do something different, but you don't know quite what it is. Is that like that for anybody here? Yeah, that's life, isn't it? So, because I had to go back to the voluntary sector, I did get frustrated. Over the years, I stayed, but I increasingly just felt, this isn't right. So I went to see a careers coach, and I did this visualization with her. And I don't know if anybody's ever done this, but basically, she had me saying, where do you want to be in one year? And then literally, two years. Five years, right up until I was 80. By then, I was sitting in a rocking chair in Italy. But so as I did that, she said to me afterwards, I'd like you to go away and draw doors opening. Because I talked about that a lot as I visualized. So I went away, and after one failed attempt at drawing, not my strong point, I thought, Andrea, do what you do. Do a collage. And this was it. And I want to draw your attention to this image here. Can you see that red light? It's a bit weak, isn't it? But this is basically this image here, the women under the blanket. Because as I was creating the collage, I saw that image, and it really resonated with me. In fact, it made me feel really upset. I thought, is that how I feel? I feel hidden. I feel suffocated. I feel trapped. I feel like I'm not being true to me. It was awful. I knew I wasn't happy, but I had no idea I felt that bad. Does anybody else feel like that? Have felt like that? Yeah. It's not nice, is it? And actually, when I did that, I was determined I wasn't going to stay under that blanket. It was time to come out. And so this image here, when I saw that, I was like, OK, this is also me saying, Andrea, time to come out. And so I left my job and I started Unglue You. Now, I would say that I didn't just look at that and think, oh, awesome collage, let me start a business. <laughs> I had been using this process for three years with, in the voluntary um, capacity, and I'd seen the difference it made. So I took a risk, and I left. 
So now I'm just going to talk you through how it works and how it can work for you. I keep pointing that there. So we're going to talk about the power of images to communicate. And I'll be doing that with a little bit of your help and one of my client's stories. Here, we'll be talking about tapping the unconscious. That part of your everyday thinking that you're not aware of, but actually affects your behavior. Here, we'll be looking at external visualization and goal setting. Because one of my clients said, when you know where you're going, you're more likely to get there. And lastly, we'll look at storytelling and how collage can help to tell and shape your story. So, I'll just step out of the way. So, the power of images communicate. So, our ancestors, the cavemen, they used drawings to teach, to share, and to communi communicate before there was language. And even now, we've kind of come full circle, and images are still used as a powerful communication in Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Babies don't have a language. They see and make sense of the world through seeing. They don't have language, they, that comes later. So that's how we start out. I must keep doing that. Okay, have you ever felt sometimes that you can't find the right words to express yourself? Yeah? And that normally happens when you're going through a period of change. Something that's left you feeling uncertain, it feel, you feel stressed, and you're like, I just can't find the words to explain how I feel. Well, with an image, it acts as a trigger, a point from which you can have dialogue and a conversation. OK, our brains find images easier to recollect, and that's because they're actually stored in long-term memory. Now, who here has been in that situation where you, you see someone, you're like, ah, oh, I know your face, I know your face, what's your name, what's your name? Who here has had that? Yeah? And who here, you might not want to put your hand up for this bit, has carried on the conversation hoping they don't notice. Yeah. <laughs> why do we do that? <laughs> but that is why, because we remember images. And here's some stats for you. So as you see there, images are processed 60,000 times faster than text. Did you know your brain only has to see an image for 13 milliseconds? and it will register with your brain. 13 milliseconds, I can't even comprehend that. And 90% of information transmitted to the brain is visual. So, I'm gonna ask you to join in now, okay? Can you all hear me at the back e well enough with the, yeah, great. So I'm gonna show you a couple of slides, and what I'm gonna ask you to do is, the moment you know what it is, I want someone to shout it out. And you're really going to have to shout because it's, it's noisy, isn't it? Yeah? So this is the first one. Yeah. <laughs> right. Next one. <laughs> Did you see the difference in how fast? That's the processing. Yeah. Okay, so that image there, yeah, it's a chimpanzee, but with this one, I want to ask how it makes you feel. Sad, yeah. Stress, something, anything else? Yeah, angry, yeah. So we've got emotions, yeah, we've seen that and it's evoked emotions for us. And actually, when you sort of people straight away, like, oh, angry and upsetting, I'm just going to change it so you don't have to keep looking at that one. A little humorous one for you. Poor, so, poor thing. Poor thing. <laughs> okay. So why, why, why do we respond emotionally to images? Well, actually, visual memory is encoded in the same part of the brain where our emotions are processed. So when you have visual stimuli and you have an emotional response, the two become linked, and they form your memories and they become stored in your long-term memory back here, and that makes them easy to recall. 
and images are really persuasive. We see this in marketing. The marketing sector, they know it. They deliberately choose images that will invoke an emotional response in us. They want to influence our behavior. And that first image I showed you of the chimpanzee, that's the kind of image you'll have seen in the RSPCA campaigns, for example. And does anybody here remember the NHS no smoking campaign? They had a cigarette and it became like a cancer stick, yeah? That one was deliberately done to shock and to scare you into giving up smoking. So they used it really powerfully. And you may be thinking, okay, so what's that got to do with me? What it's got to do with you is those same images, your images that you choose in your collage, they will motivate you to action. And I'm just going to share a story with you. Maybe not. This is one of my client's collages. Her name's Natalie. Now, Natalie worked for a travel agent, but she didn't want to. She wanted to work in childcare. But her family said to her, no, 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 you don't want to be doing that. That's risky. You get great perks. You don't want to leave. It's risky. And does that, again, ring a bell with anyone? Where you want to do something different, but there's people in your life who say, no, 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 that's not a good idea. And it might not be your job. It might be a relationship, one you want to end, one you want to start. It could be studying, it could be traveling. Yeah, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Well, Natalie wasn't prepared to stay put. She attended one of our workshops in 2014. And she said to me, my collage is about my journey from where I am to where I want to be. And what it's done, it's allowed me to see the conflict that was going on for me. She felt that she had been one way at home, another way at work, one way with her friends, another way at church. She just wanted to be Natalie, her authentic self. And so does Natalie's story resonate with anyone here? But you'll feel like you're putting on all these different masks for other people instead of being true to who you are. Hands up if that's you. Yeah, I've had that. But because she created her collar, she was like, nah, I don't, I don't want this conflict, conflict. That's where she wanted to be, that lovely Monet picture. So what she did, she started taking active steps towards her goal. And in 2006, she qualified in childcare, and she is living the life she desired. And she said to me, Andrea, I used to look at my collage every day. I would look at it, and it would motivate me to keep going. And when things got really tough, it would remind me why I was doing this. So now we're going to look at tapping your unconscious. So I believe that you know what's best for you. You have the answers within you. But what happens is life gets in the way. We get busy, we get stressed, things change, and we end up getting in a muddle and find ourselves on the wrong path or doing something we don't really want to be doing. But actually, we have the answers. But to get to them, we've got to tap our unconscious. Now, the unconscious, its language isn't verbal-centered, it's metaphorical, it's teeming with images, and that makes it really hard to reach using a verbal-centered approach. But when you use images, it bypasses those limitations. What happens when you use images, your visual metaphors will help you to understand what's going on for you. It will elicit new thoughts, different ideas, new perspectives, because you're looking at things from a completely different angle. Most of the times we look at things from a word-based perspective. So it just helps with that clarity and raising your own self-awareness. And finally, when you work with me, if you choose to work with me, what happens is we come at it from curiosity, non-judgmentally. Yeah, you come at it without thinking, I know what's going to happen. And when you do that, it actually allows anything to happen. You park your rational side and you can hear your intuition. How many of you give your intuition a chance to be heard? Oh, one person, two people. 
Yeah, most of us, we're so busy, aren't we, day to day, getting on, running from here to there. But actually, when you step back and you listen, you'll have your answers. OK. Can you see that? It's a bit faint, but can you see it? So it's a Libra-style weighing scale with a clock on one side and money on the other. Now, does anybody here know what metaphor that represents? I know this is a bit like university challenge, but yes, time is money. So we equate time to money. And because we do that, we treat it in the same way. So the same way money can be spent, we spend time. Save money, save time, waste money, waste time. And the problem with that is we treat time as this commodity. And we're really precious with it, aren't we? Because we don't want to waste it. But also, just like money, we never feel we have enough. Hand up if you ever feel like you have enough time or money. Most of us don't have enough time or money. So, why does this matter for you? Okay. Do you know what? It's, it's on there as well. I don't like it looking up there. So, when you create your collage, your visual metaphors that you'll choose, they will help you understand how you relate to the world. Because in the same way you relate time to money, you, your metaphors will interpret how you relate to the world. And I will show an example later. And we will discuss your metaphors. I will talk through them with you. I will ask you questions, and you will get to understand what they mean for you personally. Once you know what your metaphor is saying to you, how it's making you behave, you can choose. Do I, do I want to keep it? Is it serving me? Do I need to tweak it, maybe? Or do I just want to bin it and get a whole new one? Whatever you decide to do, those metaphors will continue to inform how you behave in the future. So this is another one of my client's collages. Now, she's a psychologist, a business psychologist. And when she came to see me in 2015, she used this word, fake, because that's how she felt. She felt like a fake. She used the term imposter syndrome, because that's how psychologists call it. And compared to her colleagues, she thought, I'm not good enough. I don't know enough. And I will ask here, you know, again, put your hand up if you've ever felt that compared to other people, you're not good enough. You don't know enough. You feel like, yeah, I'm going to get found out. That's how she felt. So she's looking through, and she sees this image here. This guy is a mixologist, so he makes cocktails. And she just really knew that she wanted to use this image. She had no idea why, she just wanted it on there. So she put it on, and we talked about it. And she realized that a mixologist has a range of resources, a range of skills and knowledge that they draw on to be able to create these amazing cocktails. And not only that, they have creativity and the ability to make whole new ones. And the more she's talking, the more she realizes, hang on, that's me. I'm like that. I have a broad range of skills and knowledge. I can take the training I've got, my experience, the fact that I'm a psychologist, and I bring them together and make packages for my clients to meet their specific needs. And that's all it took, like a light bulb went on for her. I know what I'm doing, actually. I do know what I'm doing. And last year, she emailed me and she said to me, Andrea, I am sure that my one-to-one -one consultation with you made me agree to work with a company in San Francisco doing online coaching for leaders. I am so happy. Who here wants to join Vicky? Who here wants to be confident in their own ability? Yeah? Who wouldn't want to be confident in their own ability? I know I, I want to be. But I know I am. I've done enough of these to know. OK, so you get to take part again. A bit harder this time. So I'm going to show you some images. And what I'd like you to do is, when you see them, just say how it makes you feel, or whatever words come to mind. And again, I'm going to send around a, a roving mic for this. So when you think of something, stick your hand up. Go with your gut. Don't overthink it, yeah? 
We're going to use our intuition here. So there, pile of frogs. What does that make you think of? I don't know how I'm getting in there. And I'd say, you know, there's no right or wrong with this. It's literally just what you think. It makes okay. me think with a strong foundation, there is no limits how far you can go. Okay, there was a lady there. Thank you. That Sorry. lady there. Sorry. I didn't register what this was at first, so it just, I just saw it as something different. Difference. That's Dif the word. Different. Okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. Can we just take, can you take the lady at the back? Yep. And then, then we have to move on to the, nec to the next image, so maybe I'll catch you guys next time. It makes me think of family. Ah. Uh, they're all part of the same family, and they're, they're helping each other, supporting each other. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So this is what people said. There's always support. So that's similar to your family one. But somebody saw it the other way around. They saw it's the weight of the world on your shoulders. So one person was looking at it from the top, the other the, the bottom. And what I would say is I didn't make these up. These I used to have on my Facebook page something called Metaphor Monday. And I'd post these images and say, what do you think? And this is what people said. And this is the next image. Quick think and then hands up. Oh, this lady here. Uh, lonely. Lonely. Yeah. Lonely. Lonely. Anybody else? Oh, there's a guy there. Do you want to come around? You might be able to. through the middle. Sorry, guys. Maybe I'll click. Different. Oh, that's what the other lady said about the frogs. Okay. There's a lady there in pink. I got you. I think it's saying it's a strong foundation that you can bloom whatever you want. Ah, yeah. Thank you. That's really interesting because look what people said. Determination in the face of adversity. Potential, very similar to what you said, isn't it? And that really fits what we're talking about today. And then the last one, lonely. It's a very different perspective. It's actually the same image. Last one. Goat. There's a lazy there. I just think he looks very proud of himself. Ah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Okay, what we had. Agile and determined. Lacking a sense of purpose. And greedy and selfish. Now, I'm just going to tell you where these originated from. That goat was used in a woman's collage at a workshop. And she was the one at the bottom. She said, I think greedy and selfish because my neighbors are not allowing us to have an extension. And they have goats. And they keep eating my plant in my garden and taking my clothes off the washing line. So I think greedy and selfish. Another one was like, really? I was thinking agile and determined. She was thinking of those mountain goats. Have you seen them? You know when the, the ledge is that thick and they're standing on it like this and there's a sheer drop and they're like, I've got this. Yeah, I've got this. Like your one is really proud. And that lacking sense of purpose, that was actually me. Because I was thinking of the goats that I've seen in Jamaica that are just randomly moving around. I'm like, what's going on there? Don't you have anything to do? Yeah? So that, that was my one. So three very different perspectives. Same image again. So visualizing goals. So when we're talking about this, we're talking about external visualization. You know, I mentioned earlier about when I did the visualization thing and I went one year, two years up there, yeah? Well, that was great. But when you have something you can take away, something tangible, something to hold on to and look at and be able to say, yeah, this is where I want to be. This is how I want to be. Something to remind, motivate and inspire you. It makes such a lot of difference. 
And I always encourage people to put their collages up, somewhere where they'll see them regularly and be reminded. One of my clients actually framed hers, and then she put it in her downstairs toilet. And she was like, then I could see it every day. Yeah, and not only that, when other people came, they could see it. And she said it was a great conversation piece. Okay, so we decipher words in a linear fashion. You know when you were reading about the cat? Yeah, that was linear. And that's why it took you so long to work out what it was, because you have to process it. With the image, it's boom, it's like a shortcut right there. But because we can process a scene, in another, there's another stat for you, in one tenth of a second, you can process a visual scene. You can take it all in. And not only can you take it in quickly, you will remember it. And you remember it because it's stored. Where's it stored? Yeah, long-term memory. OK. And once you visualize them, they can act as a starting point. And when I talk about visualizing goals, I'm not just talking about the goals of what you want. I'm talking about how you want to be and who you want to be. So your how are your emotions and your behavior. Your who are your values. And your how and your who combine to determine how you're going to achieve the what. And when they're all combined, you get a really holistic approach. And you tap your emotions, sorry, you link your emotions to your goals. And when you do that, you're way more likely to achieve them. Who here has goals? Okay, who here wants to tell us what your goal is? <laughs> That's so interesting. Yeah, okay. We'll take this lady and then the lady in the, in the cream there. We'll just take, hang on. What's your goal? One of my goals is to retire my husband. <laughs> retire him? Ah. Oh. What do you mean? Sorry. Because <laughs> he works so hard. Ah, oh, so you want him to be able to... Yes. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lady there in the cream coat. So if you go around. Hi, sorry, I'm going to maybe come around this way. Sorry. Hi. Hi. Um, I want to write children books. Ah, yeah. OK. OK. <laughs> Collage can help you with that. Yeah, it will get you started. Thank you for sharing your goals. You know, our goals are so important, aren't they? They're like our dreams in our heart and they keep us going. They are, they are us. So, your how, your who, and your what happen in the part of the process where the magic happens, where you go from having this pile of images to your stories. Yeah, because what happens is when you get the images, so you've got a bit of paper and you've got the images and you start moving them around. And as you move them around, you start to see connections and relationships. Patterns start to emerge. You also then get an idea of priorities. And the priorities may come about because a theme is repeated regularly. It might be because of where you choose to put something on the paper. Maybe you put it at the bottom, and it's the foundation on which you're going to build your goal. Maybe it's in the middle, and everything else radiates around it. Or perhaps you're going to put it at the top. It is the headline for your life, for your goal, or whatever it is you're looking at. Also, the images you don't use, they will tell you a lot. It might be blockages you have, and you think, actually, I don't want that. I don't want that in my collage. I recognize it's a blockage. Or maybe you just decide something else. But the whole time you're doing this, you're playing and you're working out where you're going to put things, you've got this internal chatter going on, this dialogue. And I really encourage you to pay attention to that. Because when you listen to it, there are questions, there are answers, there is analysis, and there are conclusions. And it just really raises your self-awareness. And when you've got that, it gives you clarity and focus. And so we move on to storytelling, the last part. Storytelling, like using images to communicate, is a part of what it means to be human. 
We have always told stories. There is no culture that doesn't tell or share stories. Stories allow us to connect with others. It encourages people to listen while others share, just like I've been doing here, where I've been sharing my clients' stories and you've been listening and sharing some of your stories. What's interesting to you? When I say it allows you to tell your current story and also your future one, what I mean is quite a lot of people in their colleges, what they do is they do where they are and where they want to go. And I showed you that on Natalie's one. You know when she said it was, this is where I am, but this is where I want to be. My one that I showed you at the beginning is similar. So I started at the bottom and mine goes, it goes upwards. So not only are you saying this is where I am, you're actually reshaping your future. You are taking charge and saying, this is what I want my future to look like. This is how I want to be in my future. It quickly builds connections and trust because you're sharing. And as you share, you see, actually, we've got something in common. Maybe it's a value. Maybe it's a dream. Maybe it's a past experience. But that's how we connect with people. We have something in common with them. Like today, again, when I've been asking them, you've been like, yeah, I felt like that. Yeah, I've done that. It connects us. And this bit, I love this bit, because when you work in a, in a group, and even as a one-to-one -one with me, you just get encouraged. You feel validated. My story is important. Somebody's listening to my story. I have something to say. You have something to share, yeah? Our stories are so important. And when somebody says, you know, you want to write children's book, you can do it. I believe in you. You want to retire your husband? <laughs> I believe you. You can do it. And so we just build each other up. So, collaging. Collaging will help unlock your potential to live the life you desire by bringing unknown thoughts, ideas, and feelings to the surface. So it's that awareness raising. I talked about identifying blockages. Maybe it's those images you don't use. And actually, identifying blockages is key. If you're going to move forward, there might be something stopping you. If you know what it is, you can do something about it. Recognizing strength. That was Vicky's collage, actually recognizing, I do know what I'm doing. Connecting your goals emotionally, talked about that. Reaffirming and discovering values. You know, sometimes when I work with people, it isn't about, this is where I want to be. It's, gosh, yeah, I am in the right place. Now I can go forward full steam ahead. Gaining clarity. I'll tell you a quick story for this. I worked with a man, and he wasn't sure if he wanted to be a musician or do um, boxing. He loved them both. And the thing is, he was really good at both of them. So he came to a group workshop, and he did his collage, and music came up as being the thing that he really, really enjoyed the most. And he was like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. So off he went, came back a few months later, and he did a one-to-one. -one, and whoop, music again came up. He was like, OK. It, it must be music. Six weeks ago, he launched his first EP. I went along to the launch. It was amazing. He was fantastic. But he had learned that that was what was important to him. He still does the boxing. He does it in his spare time. He does it to keep fit. But he realized that music was his heart's desire. And once he realized that, he could do that. He could prioritize it. Yeah? Who here would like to have more clarity about which way they need to go? Hands up if you'd like more clarity. And finally, collage will help you. This is the, to me, this is the most exciting part of it. Because you take it away and because it's yours, you made it. You chose the images. You decided for yourself what you wanted. So it's like, this is mine. I am going to live like this. I am going to be this. Yeah? OK. Don't be scared. Do you remember at the beginning, 
back to my story. And I said how I felt like that and how awful it was. And some of you like that resonated with you. Either you felt like that previously or perhaps you still do. And I was like, no, I am not prepared to feel like that anymore. I'm not living my life under a blanket. I'm standing here in front of you now and I'm talking to you, I'm sharing my story, I'm telling you about my business. And I'm not going to stand here and say it's been easy. Of course it isn't. I've had setbacks. I've had disappointments. I have days where I think, I really do not want to get out of bed and work on this anymore. But it is my passion, and so I do. But I'll tell you something, I will never, ever again feel like that girl under the blanket. When I created it, I deliberately chose this lady here. When I saw it, I was like, that's how I want to feel. I want that movement. I want that energy. I want that joy. Hands up if you want that energy and movement and joy. Yeah? Who wouldn't? And that's what I have. Yeah, I have bad days. We all have bad days. But that's how I am. And that's what I want for you. Oh, whoops, sorry. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> So what I'm going to ask you to do now, on your seats, on your seats, you will have a key. You will have a key. I have a key. Mine's crushed. Yeah? This luggage tag, has everybody got a key? Yeah? Okay. So. The luggage tag represents your destination. One side is blank. And what I'm going to ask you to do, not now, but it's to write your goal, your dream, how you want to be on the luggage tag, yeah? And these keys are yours to take away. They're all different. They're all unique, just as you are all different and unique. On the other side, there is a 20% discount. Now, that discount is for my services, whether one-to-one -one or online. It does end today. And the reason I've done that is to just encourage you to action. You may decide that you're not ready, because not everybody will be right now. We go through stages to reach where we want to change. But if you feel you are ready, I would really encourage you to come down and book on. If you don't want to do this, if there's something else you feel would suit you better, that's fine. But I just really want to encourage everybody in this room to do something. Don't come to this expo and leave and do nothing. Yeah, there's a lot of untapped potential right here. You have what you need. So what I'm going to ask you to do, that slide that said high engagement, high audience participa participation, was because I'm going to ask you now to stand up, to stand up, everybody on your feet. Okay. Your key, the other bit, your key, your individual key, represents you. I am saying to you, you have what you need. Yeah? You have the skills. You, you have the experience. You, lady in the purple scarf, you have the experience. You have the passion. You have the knowledge. You, you have the experience. Everybody in this room already has what you need. It may be in seed form, yeah? You may need to work on it, but you have it. So I'm going to ask you to hold up your keys. Hold up your keys, yeah? And after the count of three, we are going to shout release. We're going to release this potential, yeah? One, two, three, release! Yeah, big clap to yourselves, yeah! Okay, you can sit down and take your keys home. Hang on to your keys and remember what they mean, yeah? So what next? Well, we're at stand 144A. You just go out the door to your right and we're near the juice bar on the corner. Come and say hello. Come and ask any questions. We don't actually have time 
now to ask questions. But yeah, come and ask me and I'm happy to talk to you. Enter our prize draw. On your seat, you will have um, a form. You can fill it in, have a chance to win three books and a free online consultation with me, plus a collage starter kit. Oh, what is the matter with me? I've got some images, some laminated images. So if you want to play and have a go for yourself, see what, see what happens, what images you choose, please do come and do that as well. And yeah, we've started a conversation. I'd like to continue that conversation. I have a Facebook group. If the one thing you do when you leave is perhaps join the Facebook group, then let that be your thing where you can continue to be fed into by myself and the other people in the group. I have a newsletter and of course, a website, so have a check out of that. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, my hashtag is at UnglueU. If you enjoyed the talk, please tweet about it, include the hashtag the best you, and follow me and I'll follow you back if you're on there. We can keep the conversation going on Twitter. And finally, yes, if you could help me to continue telling the story, all our stories, yeah? the people, stories of the people I've worked with. Maybe your story if you come along and do a collage. That would be really great. I've really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much for coming.